I believe everybody knows quite well what the five aggregates are. I don't have to even mention them. It is so simple. It's just five words to remember. And let us spend some time trying to understand these five words. Um, In uh, Mahasatipatthana Sutta, uh, we read Nacha Kinchiloke Upadhyati. We don't uh, hold on to anything. That is one part of five aggregates. Five aggregates, as you all know, form, feelings, perceptions, thoughts, and consciousness. And um, these are the things that we cling to. In this uh, discussion, we have to we spend some time uh, trying to understand uh, these five aggregates as uh, much as we can. Five aggregates are called Panchakhanda in Pali, and sometimes they are called Pancha Upadana Khanda. In the sentence, Nacha Kinchiloke Upadhyati, they are word, in that place, the word Upadhyati refers to clinging, clinging to these five aggregates. Clinging is uh, one of the factors of the dependent origination. Tanha Pachaya Upadana. Because of clinging, there is a grasping. Upadana Pachaya Bhavo. Because of grasping, there is becoming. Now you can see the depth of this word when you hear the word Upadana, Upadhyati, grasping, holding on to. And you, when you hear the words Pancha Upadana, grasping to five aggregates, so you can, then we can see the relationship between grasping and the five aggregates. It's a very uh, important aspect of the teachings of the Buddha, although it seems uh, very easy, simple. Uh, aggregates uh, number one is form. What is form? Form is uh, either gross or subtle far or near, visible or invisible, low or high, gross or subtle, any form. For instance, we have a physical body. We all know that it's made up of the four elements, earth, air, water and fire. Uh, these are gross forms. 
I mean, these four, the, the four made up of these four elements are gross. They also can be very subtle. For instance, our uh, sensory objects like sound, smell, taste, touch. And uh, sound, smell, uh, sight, sound, uh, smell, taste, touch, these five. And even mental objects also can be forms. Sound is a form. Sight is a form. Smell is a form. Taste is a form. It doesn't matter whether we use the word kaya or rupa. I think rupa may be more uh, rupa kaya. We say rupa kaya. When you say mental objects, your taste, touch, it's all part of rupa kaya? Yes. I think it is better for us to stay with the word rupa. Hmm? Because the five aggregates always defined as not uh, kaya vedana and so forth. It's always defined as rupa vedana. Rupa vedana sanya sankar vinyana. We never see it kaya vedana sanya sankar vinyana. No, I'm thinking of the difference between kaya as body, as in materiality, yeah. and kaya as in an aggregate, a heap of things. Right. Uh, aggregate is always uh, is rupa. Rupa is form aggregate. Uh, kaya comes under the name of rupa. Would you say nama kaya? Never. Now, nama kaya, rupa kaya, you don't find in sutras. You find it only in commentaries and abhidhamma. That is why I try to avoid these confusing statements. I always stick to the sutras and we try to explain in terms of sutras and perhaps later on when you want to have, when you have more time and have, uh, you know, time to think and so forth, separately you may take Abhidhamma commentarial descriptions but for our, we got to stay on the straight path without deviating into other, you know, many things. When we go into Abhidhamma, there are many things to say, you know, it's too complicated. So I want to stay only with the Sutra description and stay with the word Rupa. Uh, so rupa is uh, either sound or the body, this huge kaya body, or uh, senses. When we say body, everything included. In details we can say senses, because eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and all these things are in the body. Although when we define six senses, when we de define, uh, differentiate six senses, we put kaya or body separately. But when we say rupa, we mean internal rupa, external rupa. Form internal forms, external forms. Internal forms uh, like uh, uh, body, the senses, and all this, our internal body. External body are their objects, like eyes, we see objects, other human beings, other all beings, forms and so forth, are my visual objects. So for this person, what is in here is internal body, and everything else is external body. So, uh, sound, smell, taste, touch, and even thought, 
uh, mental objects uh, regarding with other beings can be my external bodies. Uh, I like to stay in a very simple way. So, <coughs> uh, this is form. All this is called form. And when this, all this coming together, there will arise feelings. Uh, feeling, as you all know, comes through the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. Therefore, they are called Chakku uh, Sampasaja Vedana, Sota Sampasaja Vedana, that means the feeling coming through the contact of our eyes, feeling coming through the contact with our ears, and so forth, nose, tongue, body, and mind. So feeling comes, six types of feelings. We can uh, multiply these feelings into 108 if you want. I think we have mentioned them in the past. The body you can divide into many countless parts if you like. Primarily four elements, secondarily four derived elements. Four elements are four, uh, what you call, uh, earth, water, air, and fire. Derived elements are vanna, ganda, rasa, oja. That is, this also are, uh, are mentioned in the sutras. You can find them in the sutras. That is color, smell, uh, nutriment, and taste. Color, smell, taste, and nutriment. All these together call uh, elements. Derive main primary main uh, main primary elements and four elements and other four derived elements. So that is form. If you want to divide them, you can divide them into <coughs> subatomic levels, molecular level, until they completely disappear from our perception. Even mentally, we cannot think of the last stage of form. You can break them into that. Uh, microscopic or some microscopic levels. Then the feelings you can divide into 108 if you want. 108 means six kind of feelings. Uh, multiply by three, sukha, dukkha, adukkha, masukha, that is pleasant, unpleasant, and uh, neither pleasant nor unpleasant. Then you multiply them into, uh, then when you multiply six, uh, six by three, you have 18. You multiply these 18 in, by two as uh, uh, feeling with the underlying tendency of greed, hate, greed, hatred, and delusion. Feeling with the underlying tendency of greed, hatred, and delusion, and the feeling without underlying tendency of greed, hatred, and delusion. Then you have 36. Then you multiply these 36 into past, present, and future, so you get 108. Now, all these together call feeling, <coughs> aggregate, feeling aggregate. Then, Perception. Perception also are six kinds uh, through our six senses. <coughs> then 
thoughts or volitional formations are endless. Although in some uh, places you can find uh, uh, 52 or uh, in uh, uh, Salt Lake Sutta, for instance, you have 44 uh, list in Sutta. Uh, and also we have 14 uh, and all kind of categories, but uh, uh, you will, this is one aggregate that Buddha has not broken into so many uh, ty types, uh, I mean multiply by various things like uh, conscious uh, uh, form we have four main elements and four derived elements feeling we have 108 kind of feelings and the perception six kind of perceptions but the kind the thoughts volitional formations are endless however they also can be of six categories that is uh, of six sensory objects like uh, rupa sanchetana, saddha sanchetana, gandha sanchetana, rasa sanchetana, pottabha sanchetana, dhamma sanchetana. Thoughts arising from the form, visual form, thought arising from sounds, thought arising from smells, thought arising from taste, thought arising from touch, thought arising from the mental thinking or uh, mental objects. I think this kind of broad category would include any kind of thought. That may be the reason why Buddha has not put the thoughts into uh, other categories like uh, uh, feelings and form. In sutras, then we have a, a consciousness. Consciousness also six kinds, like eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose, tongue, body, and mind. These five form feeling perceptions thoughts and consciousness together taken together are called five aggregates there are many other aggregates that is for instance uh, uh, five aggregates uh, uh, of uh, spiritual uh, five aggregates like uh, sila khanda samadhi khanda sanya khanda Sila khanda, samadhi khanda, uh, panya khanda, vimutti khanda, vimutti jnana, dasana khanda. That is aggregate of morality, aggregate of concentration, aggregate of wisdom, aggregate of uh, liberation, aggregate of the vision and knowledge of liberation. Vimutti jnana, dasana khanda. And there is another aggregate, I mean these are these spiritual aggregates, we have to remember. Then there is another one aggregate, two aggregates, that is Kusalakhanda, Akusalakhanda. All ho un unwholesome things put together called Kusalakhanda, Akusalakhanda, unwholesome aggregates. All wholesome things put together he made another aggregate called Kusalakanda, wholesome aggregates. Now other aggregates are neither wholesome nor unwholesome. For instance, the body, form aggregates, feeling aggregates, perception aggregates and so forth, they are neither wholesome aggregates nor unwholesome aggregates. But only thoughts, volitional formations, put into these two broad categories as wholesome aggregates and unwholesome aggregates, only volitional formations. 
then all these aggregates Buddha put into one category called one aggregate that is called Dukkha Khanda. <laughs> Dukkha Khanda. So, now we have Upadana Khanda and Panchupadana Khanda, uh, Pancha Khanda and Panchupadana Khanda. What is the difference between Pancha Khanda, five aggregates, and five aggregates of clinging? Five aggregates are those aggregates that I mentioned. Five aggregates of clinging uh, actually mainly is. Uh, in the mind of the person who has not attained enlightenment. Five aggregates of clinging are in the mind of the person who has not attained enlightenment. How is that possible? Suppose you have attained enlightenment, I have not. In your mind, there is no <coughs> aggregates of clinging. In my mind, there is an aggregate of clinging. I cling to my body, I cling to feelings, perceptions, thoughts and consciousness of this body and I cling to your body, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness. You are fully enlightened. You have no clinging to your aggregates, but I cling to your aggregates. I cling to your feelings. I cling to your perceptions. I cling to your thoughts. I cling to your consciousness. Therefore, five aggregates of clingings are in my mind, not in your mind. In other words, fully enlightened person's mind is free from the aggregate, from clinging to aggregates. And therefore, he has five aggregates, his body, feeling, perception, thought, so forth, he has, but he does not have the aggregate of clinging. We cling to the aggregates because of our four types of clinging. Uh, in uh, Mahanidana Sutta you can see the four types of clinging and Buddha asked Vendrabhala Ananda it was said, with the clinging as a condition, there is existence. How that is so, Ananda, should be understood in this way. If there were absolutely and utterly no clinging of any kind anywhere, that is, no clinging to sense pleasures, clinging to views, clinging to perceptions and observations, I'm sorry, clinging to precepts and observations, and clinging to doctrines of self. Then, in that, in the absence, total, uh, in the complete absence of clinging, with the cessation of clinging, would existence be 
discerned. That is the question Buddha asked. That is, we cling to the body because of our, because of our sense pleasures. We like to see the body, and we cling to that sight. When we see a body, beautiful body, handsome body, through our eyes, desire arises, and because of that desire, we mentally cling to that body. When we hear a sound, we, since uh, if the sound happens to be pleasant, we cling to the sound. A smell, taste, and touch, and so forth. Whatever visual, whatever sensory object we perceive, if the object happens to be pleasant, we like the object. Desire arises in our mind, and then we cling to them. This is called clinging through desire. Clinging to sensu sensual pleasure or pleasurable objects. Then we cling uh, to our uh, views. We have a certain view, we cling to it, hold on to it. Whether the view is right or wrong, we don't know. But we, we, we cherish the view. It is our view. It arose in, uh, in my mind. I come, up, I come up with certain theories, certain ideas, and they generated in my mind. They are, since I love or I am attached to my thoughts, my feelings, whatever thought or view arises in my mind, I cling to it. That's called clinging to views. Nihilistic views, eternalistic views, materialistic views, immaterialistic views, political views, uh, all kind of views. We have, we cling to them. Then, uh, we have, we cling to all kind of uh, precepts and observances. That means, we uh, make certain rules and we cling to them. Whether the rule is uh, beneficial or not, whether the rules make any sense or not, since we make the rules, we cling to the rules. And we have certain rituals. We observe certain things, follow certain rituals, and uh, we never question those rituals because they are convenient, comfortable, making us happy, we cling to them. That is called sila bhatu padana. Sila upadana. Sila, sila vata. Sila means precepts. Vata means observances, various kinds of uh, rituals. Uh, we cling to them. Lastly, Attavadu Padana, we cling to the belief of self. Uh, and we cling to belief, we cling to all these things through uh, Craving, uh, views, and conceit. They are called tanna, ditti, mana. We cling to these things because of our craving, tanna. We cling to these things because of our conceit, aik. And we 
cling to these things because of our uh, views. Craving, views, and conceit. They are called tanna, mana, ditti. Craving is called tanna, mana is conceit, ditti means views. So, that is why in various places Buddha said, ne tang mama, ne so hamasmi, ne me so attati, evang etang yathabhutang sammapanya dathabhang. This means, uh, the, we take all the aggregates. Uh, we cling to the body thinking that body has an I. Uh, that is called Atta Vada Upadhananda. We cling to the body thinking that the body is, body has I. We cling to the body thinking that body is mine. We cling to the body because we just love the body, attached to the body. So we cling to the body through the self, notion of self. We cling to the body because of our uh, wrong uh, uh, view. We cling to the body because of our conceit. Tanha, mana, ditti. How we cling to the body because of our conceit? Because my body is healthy. I am strong. I am young. I can move. I am flexible. I can do yoga very well. Uh, I can show to people my strength. So, this is conceit. And because of this conceit, I cling to this body. My body is flexible, my body is strong, my body is young, my body can do all kinds of things, it is healthy and this and that. These are the source of conceit. Uh, mana. Mana is uh, the measurement. We use, we measure, I say, my body is, is uh, strong in relation to another person's body. There may be somebody ho stronger than me, but uh, in relation to other people around me, I think I am strong. So I am conceived. I think I am healthy. I use that as a measurement in relation to other people's health. Uh, I am uh, fast. I can move fast in relation to other people's movements. I am flexible in, in relation to other people's rigidity. And so forth, I use this body to measure myself against others and compare me with others. And so, eventually what happens, I cling to the body because of this conceit, this measurement. Uh, mana. Uh, ditti, uh, of course, is a uh, belief in uh, existing of self. Now, uh, I think my, uh, there are 20 different uh, ways of uh, treating self in relation to the five aggregates. 20 ways of dealing with self in relation to five aggregates. That is, uh, for each aggregate there are four ways. That is, I am form. 
four means mind. Uh, I am form. Uh, form is in me. I am in the form. I am separate from the form. For four uh, modes. Huh? Form as self, form. Mm-hmm. containing form, mm-hmm. and form is contained within me. Within me. You have the list. I think it is easier if we have the list in front of us. <laughs> okay, thank you. So feelings, I feel, I possess feelings. Feelings are contained in me, in myself, and I am in feelings. Similarly, perceptions, I perceive, I possess perception. Perceptions are contained in me, in myself, and I am in perception. Mental formations. I am my mental formations. I possess mental formations. Mental formations are mine. I am in mental formations. Consciousness. I am conscious. I possess consciousness. Consciousness is mine. I am in consciousness. These are the 20 ways of, 20 modes of self in relation to five aggregates. So we cling to the five aggregates because of the or this belief in self. So ordinary people think I am form, form is mine. I am feeling, feeling is mine. I am perception, perception is mine. I am volu- I, I am volitional formations and volitional formations are mine. I am consciousness. Consciousness is mine. And then we, we cling to the five aggregates. And then the five aggregates for me becomes aggregates of clinging. If I don't have all these things, still I have five aggregates. Even though I even though I have five aggregates, I don't cling to them. Therefore, five aggregates for me they are just five aggregates. So the difference between five aggregates and five aggregates of clinging is in our mind. Five aggregates. We all have five aggregates. It becomes aggregates of clinging depending on how we deal with the aggregates. Ordinary person who has not attained enlightenment cannot live without five aggregates of clinging. Ordinary person cannot live without the five aggregates of clinging because they always invariably uh, have the aggregates of clinging. They, ag- they cling to aggregates. Yeah. So, um, the expression uh, of clinging, if we're, uh, when somebody is clinging to the aggregate, the expression five aggregates subject to clinging would be the aggregates are there and they can be clung to. Yeah. Aggregates which are subject to clinging can remain as they are, uh, and then they are just five aggregates. We subject them to clinging because of our 
Tannamana Ditti. Uh, uh, craving, conceit, and wrong views, uh, we subject the five aggregates to clinging. Otherwise, they are just five aggregates. So, whenever we think of the past, the present, and future, we think in terms of five aggregates. You think, I was, uh, yesterday I was in uh, Winchester. So, you think in terms of five aggregates. Your body was there, you had feelings, you had perceptions, consciousness, thoughts. You say, uh, I'll be there tomorrow. You think in terms of five aggregates. There's no way that you can be there tomorrow without the body, feelings, perceptions, thoughts and consciousness. People think of uh, previous lives. Life before that, they have to think in terms of five aggregates. I was in, uh, I was in uh, uh, Alaska. I was an Eskimo in a hundred thousand lives ago. So that time I think, I think now in terms of five aggregates at that time. So, uh, and we can, I can even uh, cling to those five aggregates of the past and now and future in our own mind, in my own mind. This five aggregate therefore is the burden Carry out the burden, uh, Buddha said, is uh, this individual uh, the taking up the five aggregates is rebirth. When we said, when Buddha said the <coughs> five aggregates of suffering, Buddha referred to this complete existence. The, the body is the subject of our suffering, uh, feelings, perceptions, thoughts and consciousness. All these are the source of suffering. And in the Satipatthana Sutta, it is mentioned, therefore, these five aggregates must be treated as five aggregates, not as aggregates of clinging. Nacha kinchu loke One does not cling to anything in this world of five aggregates. The world here means the body, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness. Not clinging to any of those things. Here is the Buddha's description of five aggregates and five aggregates of uh, clinging. Five aggregates, whatever kinds of form, feeling, perception, thought, and vo volitional formations and consciousness, there is whether past, future, or present, internal or external, uh, gross or subtle, inferior or superior, far or near, this is called the form, feeling, perception, thought, and uh, consciousness aggregates that is just bare aggregates. Then he defines, the differentiates the five aggregates of clinging. He says, whatever kinds of form, feeling, perception, volitional formations and consciousness there is, whether past, that is tainted, 
that can be clung to this is called the form feeling perception thought and consciousness aggregate subject to clinging so i think it is clear now there were some arahants like uh, mahakachana you remember mahakachana was fully enlightened ara there was a man called soreya this soreya uh, so mahakachana mahakachana has the five aggregates but soreya did not have five aggregates a five aggregates uh, what you call soreya had five aggregates of clinging that means uh, his mind is obsessed with conceit uh craving craving and wrong views so long as you have craving conceit and wrong views in your mind whatever aggregate you see is an aggregate of clinging to you so sore ye so mahakachana mahakachana was going to take a take a bath in the public well so he took off his robe and then so mahakachana's body was very shining he was young beautiful very handsome seeing him desire arose in uh, soreya's mind he thought ji how wonderful he becomes my wife <laughs> you see it is said uh that instant because he created such an unwholesome karma in his mind by thinking of this aran fully enlightened one to be his own wife he he committed unwholesome karma created very strong powerful mm. greed that instant he became a woman so so now he can become a wife of somebody else <laughs> so soreya by then had two children from his wife now he became a wife and he married and had two children <laughs> it is said so later on uh, he realized how uh, greedy his mind was and he went to an apologize to uh, mahakachana and mahakachana even you know it was it didn't occur to him at all he just so just uh, an incident but uh, something happened in his in soreya's mind so mahakachya said eh, forget about it. i forgive you don't worry about it so sore you turn into a man again <laughs> you know uh, he created this uh, uh, clinging in his mind and he became what he clung to that is upadana pachya bhavo what you cling to you become that so when you cling you take rebirth in that form whenever you cling to something you cling to that uh, sometimes the word the upadana pachya bhavo uh, dependent upon clinging becoming takes place uh this is um, i myself don't know how true it is but the formula dependent upon uh, becoming be- dependent upon clinging becoming is true you cling to something and you will become that that means you cling to a uh, uh, certain uh, greedy Uh, state and you end up doing that 
it doesn't have to be <coughs> that uh, mystic you want to become a, 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 say carpenter you hold on to that idea and you pursue that idea you work for that idea you do everything uh, to become a carpenter and you end up as a carpenter so you you uh, you cling to certain things then you end up in happening becoming that particular thing <coughs> I think we should have a break right now. Uh, please come back in 10 minutes. Have a water break and come back. Uh, there are many things to say about uh, fire aggregate, but uh, let us see how much we can cover this morning.